Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be going over our advanced difficulty level of systems of linear equations. Just want to say thank you for all the support the channel has been getting recently. Make sure to subscribe before we get into it and let's get started. So our first question here, Bernardo invested $2,000 into two different types of stocks. The first type cost $32 per share, second cost $48 per share. Between the two types, he purchased a total of 47 shares. How many shares of the $48 per share stock did he purchase? With our systems of linear equations, the first, first thing that we should be doing is assigning uh, variables to uh, our different values here. So I'm going to call our expensive stock E, variable E, and our cheap stock, variable C. Now we need to understand our two different linear equations. One of them is going to be a cost equation, including all of our dollar values, while the other equation is going to be just the shares themselves. So it looks a little bit like this. C plus E equals 47. So our first equation is just talking about the shares themselves. How many shares of each of them do we have? And we know that they produce a total or they add up to 47. Now with our dollar equation, we have 32 for our cheap stock plus 48 for our expensive stock and this equals $2,000. Totals up to $2,000. And now we can just solve the systems of equations. So how many shares of the $48 per share stock did he cost? So we're trying to uh, find E. So in order to find the variable E, we need to isolate the variable C in this first equation and then substitute it out. So what we need to do is subtract E from each side. So C equals 47 minus E. This is what we're going to substitute into our second equation here. So that's going to turn into 32 parentheses 47 minus E plus 48E equals 2,000. Now we're going to use distributive property and solve this out. So we need to multiply both those terms here. 47 times 32. I'll be doing this manually. 7 times 2 is 14. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 1 is 9. Carry the 0. One, uh, 7 times 3 is 21. 4 times 3 is 12. So then we are left with 4 5 and then 1, 1,504, so 1,504 minus 32E plus 48E equals 2,000. Our next step here is to combine our like terms. So negative 32E plus 48E is 16 E, so let's replace that with just 16E, and we need to also subtract 1,504 from each side. So we're going to do 2,000 minus 1,504, which is equal to 496. So now we are just left with 16E equals 496. To isolate our E variable, we need to divide each side by 16. So we have to do uh, 496 divided by 16. 16 goes into 48 three times to produce, well, 49 three times to produce 48. Then we subtract, and then we just left with 16 goes into 16 one time. That means we purchased 31 shares of our expensive or $48 per share stock. So our answer for this first question is 31. E equals 31. On to our next question here. So Mega Movers charges $19, uh, $19.5 per day for truck rentals, plus an additional mileage fee of 0 0.95 per mile. You Move It charges $42 per day for truck rentals, plus an additional mileage fee of 0 point, uh, 45 cents per mile for mileage over 20 miles. Which of the following systems of equations could be used to find the total mileage M that would make the cost P of renting a moving truck for one day equal at each rental company, assuming that M is greater than $20? So, 
we need to create one linear equation for mega movers and one linear equation for you move it, as we can see in our answer choices here. So let's just start with mega movers. Mega movers, P equals, we need to figure out which of these values is a slope and which of them is a y-intercept. We can see that this is per day, and we're finding per day. So, uh, well, we're finding the total mileage. So without total mileage, here, our variable is actually going to be per mile, because obviously we're measuring mileage here and not the amount of days. As it says, for moving a truck one day, this just cancels out this multiplication. It's not happening multiple times. We only have one day, so we're just going to be having a starting value of $19.5, meaning our variable is with our 0.95. We need to remember that uh, our slope is not always a larger amount here. We need to analyze what the question is asking us. So our first equation looks like P equals 0.95M plus 19.5, which matches uh, answer choice A and answer choice C and D. We can cross out answer choice B here. Now on to our you move it equations. We have P, once again, our y-intercept, it's the, it's the same format. So our y-intercept is going to be 42. And then our, our slope here, we need to take a look at this, plus an additional mileage fee of 45 cents per mile over 20 miles. So we need to reach that 20-mile threshold in order to uh, start charging that money. Of course, that rules out answer choice A because 20 has to be involved somehow. We have two ways that these equations are either doing it. M minus 20 or 20 minus M. Even though this is a subtle difference, there is a massive implication of what this is going to do to our equation. And I just recommend here, before understanding the mechanics behind it, we just look at it from a real world perspective. At one mile, of course it says plus an additional mileage fee for over 20 miles. So our real equation is not going to be charging, it shouldn't theoretically charge anything from um, m lower than 20. That's why we have our restriction of m is greater than or equal to 20. So let's find m values that are greater than 20. For example, 21. If m equals 21, then 21 minus 20 is 1. So we add 45 cents for that one mile. That makes sense. On the, on the other hand here, if m is 21, we do 20 minus 21 to reach negative 1. And that means that our cost is actually decreasing uh, in this format. 20 minus m, we are decreasing, which is not true. Additional cost adds on. Plus, we should be adding on our additional cost, not subtracting that. That rules out answer choice D, meaning answer choice C is correct here. So... Even with these questions, common sense is required for SAT math, even in the advanced difficulty level. On to question number three here. A caterer is determining how many forks she will need to buy for her upcoming event. Each adult needs five forks, and each child needs two forks. If the event hosts 764 adults and children in all, the caterer ordered 2,992 forks. How many adults and how many children are expected to attend? This question is extremely similar to question number one. We'll solve it as such. So adults is variable A. Uh, child Children will be variable C. One equation is going to be number of forks. One uh, equation is going to be number of people. So our number of people equation is just number of adults plus number of children equals the total number of people, 764. Then our next equation is uh, number of forks. Each adult needs five. Each child needs two, and there is a total of 2,992. Here, I'm going to solve um, for the number of adults. So I need to isolate the uh, child value. So I need to isolate variable C up here. Uh, so how I do that, I just subtract A for each side. So I just subtract A. So this equation turns into C equals 764 minus A which is perfect for substituting, using substitution, into our next equation, our second equation, our forks equation here. So we just, we are left with 5a equal, nope, plus 2 parentheses 764 minus a equals 
2,992. Let's start with this distributive property here. 2 times 764 is 1,528. 2 times negative a is negative 2a. So now we have 5a minus plus 1,528 minus 2a equals 2,992. Let's combine like terms here. 5a minus 2a is 3a. And then we need to subtract each side by 1,528. Let's write this off to the side. Remember, space is our friend here. So we do 2,992 minus 1,528. Let's do the subtraction. 2 minus 8, we need to carry the 1, go to our neighbor. 9 turns into an 8. 12 minus 8 is 4. 8 minus 2 is 6. 9 minus 5 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we left with 3a equals 1,464. In order to isolate our a variable, we need to divide both sides by 3. And now we do 1,464 divided by 3, long division style. Of course, this is my favorite when doing division manually. 3 goes into 14 4 times. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 goes into 26 8 times. 3 times 8 is 24, and then uh, 6 minus 4 is 2, bring down the 4, 3 goes into 24, 8 times. So we are left with our number of adults, A equals 488. So there are 488 adults, which matches answer choice C. So answer choice C is the correct answer here. On to our last question. Sarah has low has whole milk which contains 3.25 percent butterfat by volume and one type of low fat milk which contains one percent butterfat by volume which of the following systems can be used to determine the amount of whole milk w in ounces and the amount of low fat milk l in ounces that sarah should mix to obtain 32 ounces of low fat milk with two percent butterfat by volume so here, we just need to set up our systems of equations, as we can see with our answer choices here. Let's use some common sense in order to figure this out. So we can see here that we need 32 ounces of our low-fat uh, mixed milk. So that's going to be the total of adding up our L and our W variables. We can go ahead and cross out answer choice A and B. Now we need to see which one makes sense. We're getting 32 ounces, and here, of course, our L and W va uh, variable is going to be quite high, uh, like 10 and then like 22, for example, in order to add up to 32. But we can see here, our first equation, we're just reaching uh, 0 0.01 plus 0 0.03 is going to be 0 0.04. That's if we had one ounce. Of each of them and that is uh, even greater than 0 0.02 which completely rules out answer choice C from making sense in the first place so that only leaves answer choice D as the correct answer here so never underestimate the power of using common sense for these um, answer choices here and D is our correct answer that is all for today. We went over our advanced difficulty level of systems of linear equation word problems. I'm excited to see you guys when we tackle our next skill. I believe it involves uh, inequalities, and I will see you guys then. Ha in, the in the meantime, make sure to subscribe. Have a fantastic day, and goodbye.